So why carbon and silicon? Well, they're both in group 14. So they have four valence electrons, four electrons in the outer shell. This diagram is drawn to scale. And you can see that silicon is bigger than carbon because silicon has one more electron shell. Now, knowing that the bond length is equal to the internuclear distance, the distance between the nuclei, bigger atoms have got to have longer bonds. Their nuclei are going to be further apart. So the electrons in longer bonds are further from the attraction of the nuclei. That covalently bonded electrons are not so attracted to the nuclei in silicon, they're further away from it. So longer bond, less attraction, means a weaker bond. but there does appear to be a fly in the ointment. If silicon has the weaker bond, then how come it's got the highest nuclear charge? Why is the bond not stronger in silicon? It's more attractive, isn't it, that nucleus? And the reason is to do with shielding. Those flashing red electrons there are called shielding electrons. And so those 10 electrons in silicon negate 10 of the positive charges on the silicon nucleus. So effectively, leaving it to be only a plus four nuclear charge. This is the so-called effective nuclear charge. Effective nuclear charge is the number of protons minus the number of shielding electrons and shielding electrons are the non-valence electrons, the ones that are getting in the way of the valence electrons. So since all the atoms here had the same effective nuclear charge, that is four plus, effective nuclear charge is irrelevant to the bond strength. And the only important factor is the bond length. The longer bonds are the weaker bonds.